Hi, I'm Jamie Fish, Director of our Biblical Counseling Ministry here at Bellevue Baptist Church. In light of everything that we face every day and the uncertainty of what the future holds, I've had many people ask me how to deal with the undercurrent of fear that they feel constantly. While most would be content with these feelings just going away, I believe that God really has something better for us. Some have spoken to me about their worries and their concerns. Referring to 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, they tell me I know I'm supposed to take every thought captive, but I just don't know how to do that in a situation like this. Well, let me take just a couple of minutes and share with you what I've shared with them that has helped so much. Philippians 4, 4 through 13 is a great passage to refer to, and it certainly ends with a great assurance that most people already know. Verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And ultimately, we wanna land there, believing that with uncertainty, I can do all things that God would have me to do through His strength. Paul carves out a path for us to follow to get to verse 13. First in verse four, rejoice always in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. We start with rejoicing. In most cases, this requires something outside of us, a focusing on Jesus and what He's done for us already. The things that we already have seen Him do, to help remove all the doubt of his love, his faithfulness, and his commitment to us. In Philippians 4, many are even familiar with verse 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Well, this is very comforting, but some have said it's not working for me like it used to. Well, verses eight and nine are very important because they give us insight of making this work on a daily basis. Listen in. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there's any excellence and if anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. The things you've learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Now, God has blessed us with a mind that at least for most of our lives can store and retrieve all sorts of information, but it has one beautiful limitation. It can only think about one thing at a time. Taking every thought captive involves identifying thoughts that are attempting to capture our mind and to cripple us, and then to replace them. With God's help, of course. God's commands here for us is to think on these things. Some versions say dwell, and this is a command and it has the idea of lingering on these things. But we're not able to think on these things, these words, but we're to think on the things that these words represent. Let me give you an example. A mom has a teen that's living a rebellious life. She's losing sleep and making herself sick over the mess that's resulting from the choices that her child is making. She thinks about it, and that's all she can think about, and it's all negative, and it's all consuming. It steals her joy, it steals her sleep, paints a horrible future for her child, And this is all she can think about. And the solution is taking every thought captive. But it's not just positive thinking. It's scriptural thinking. Asking the Holy Spirit to fill our mind until there's no room for any destructive thoughts. Scripture tells us that no temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And the Lord will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able, but with the temptation will provide a way of escape that you may bear up under it. And there is certainly a great temptation with fear and worry. While it doesn't take all these away these feelings, it is encouraging to know that we're not the first or the only ones to ever have to deal with something that feels like this. So this mom needs only to, t- to believe what God's Word says in this passage and to ask God for help. She should pray something like this, Father, my child is acting out. The fear of consequences and an uncertain future has caused me to fear and worry. But you've told me to think on the things that are true and honorable and pure and lovely, whatever has a good reputation, all the things that are excellent and worthy of praise, but I can't do that without your help. So please help me now. Lead my mind and fill it with you and the truth about you and the truth about my relationship with you and all that you've shown me about your faithfulness. You're my father and I'm your child and you'll never abandon me. You're a faithful God and you've proven your faithfulness over and over again You tell me in your word that you watch over me even when I'm asleep, and I trust you. You've forgiven my sins, and you've already given me the greatest gift, your son Jesus, and you promise that you'll never hold anything less than your perfect will for me. Holy Spirit, help me now. Fill my mind with the things that are true about you. You know all that's going on and all that is consuming me. I know that you're working a plan that includes my child, that you're building character both in me and in my child to reflect your perfect will 
And Father, while I cannot see the future and how it will all work out, I know that you can. I'm trusting you in this situation by faith. You've never failed in working your perfect plan and you are good and just and you are, your timing is always perfect. Please help me. I want to be obedient to this command that you've given me here, so fill my mind. I surrender it to you and I trust you. And I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Remember, Paul is telling his readers to think on these things, not just these words. And for a good exercise related to this, I encourage people to take a sheet of paper, turn it sideways, and write out the words that we're commanded to dwell on that are listed in Philippians 4, 8, and 9. It might be appropriate to look these words up to get a good working definition. Some of them aren't words that we use very often. And then create columns underneath these words. Then begin to add scripture that will reflect the ideas that are here. And this will become a life document that you can refer to and add to for the rest of your life. Anytime we fret, worry, feel anxiety, we can refer to these things. And they'll point us back to the Lord and how aware and involved and powerful He is. Our faith in Him grows when we review our, and fill our minds with the accurate view of God. This can serve as a life document that we refer, refer back to and add to for the rest of our lives. Because all of us are going to feel these things at some point in time or another, we're gonna be pressed beyond what we're able to handle. We can get ahead of the curve by determining that we will fill our mind with the things that are true and honorable, right, pure, lovely. Whatever's of good repute, if there's any excellence, if anything worthy of praise. God bless you as you take every thought captive.